Now it's time to take a look at a stem and leaf plot and how we're going to make that out of our data. Remember that we're focusing on quantitative data. In the last chapter we looked at categorical or um, qualitative data. Now we're focusing on quantitative. So I'm going to use the same data set that I used before to make a histogram. This over here is a histogram of this data. And it's the maximum number of home runs hit by an individual player from 1980 to 2009 in, in the major leagues, in Major League Baseball. And I've got some in the 40s, some in the 30s, some in the 50s, some in the 70s, some in the 60s. So I'm going to go ahead and start to create a stem and leaf plot. Well, a stem is one part of the plot and a leaf is the other part of the plot. The stem is um, the, the major part of the number. And the leaf is always the last digit of the, num of the number or the data value that you're looking at. The last digit. In this case, I have everything that are in the four 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. So here I'm going to go ahead and create my stems. I've got some in the 30s, so I'm going to put a 3. I've got some values in the 40s, some in the 50s, some in the 60s, and some in the 70s. So this right here, this group of numbers, and I'm going to put a line here, that's a part of the plot, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, to represent the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, is called the stem. Then we have the leaves. So where do the leaves go? Well, at that, the leaves are the last digit of each one of these numbers. So here we go. Let's start with 48. 48, I would put an 8 right here. That tells that anybody that's looking at this that I have a 48. Then we go to 31. Put a 1 right here. And then 39. So I'm going to put a 9 right here. 40. Well, I'm going to put a 0 right here. So I don't have to write the entire number. I'm basically just writing the last digit, which allows people to know whoever looks at this, if you know what a stem and leaf plot is, I have one value that's 48, one that's 40, another one that's 31, another one that's 39. And let's just continue here. This would be 43. I have two 40s, so I'm going to put two more zeros here. And a 49, a 42, and a 47. So 49, 42, 47. Then 51, so I'll put a 1 right here. 44, 43, 46. So 44, 43, 46. I'm going to move this out of the way. Hopefully you'll notice that I'm trying to put the same distance between, between each one of these values and I'm putting them in order vertically as well, trying to line them up, I should say. So let's continue here. I've got a 43 and then we go 50, so a zero right there, 52, 56, so 52, 56, then we get a 70, so a zero, 65, Right there, a 50, so 50, put a zero right here, 73, right there, and 57, 47, 48, 51, 58, 54, 48, and 47. And 47. This gives me an idea, and I can look at all of these values in a little bit more organized way. 31, 39, 48, 40, 43, 40, uh, 40, 40, 49, and I can go all the way to 70 and 73. But there's one more thing I need to do. I've organized it to a certain extent, but I want to organize it a little bit better by putting all of these in order. So the first one, 31, 39, is in numerical order. But the second one, 48, 40, 43, this row right here, this set of leaves, is not in order. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. I'm going to put them in order. Um, try to move all these around. Now, some of these may be connected to each other, so I'm going to have to separate them a little bit. But I want to bring all of my zeros to the front. So I'm going to pull this 8 over here, pull this 3 over for a second, and let's line these up a little bit better. Um, I've got a 2, I have no 1, so this needs to be separated, so let me uh, ungroup those. So there's 42, and 
I don't have any more 42s, but I do have a 43. Here's another 43. Let me separate these. So 43, 43, and I've got 44, and then 46, and then my 47s. Separate these. A little bit monotonous here, but it's important to put these in order. 7, my 8 will come in just a second, 48, and then finally my 49. There we go. Now I need to do the same thing. This is okay. This one's okay. The 70, 73, and there's only one in the, six, in the 60s. So let's change this around and bring the zeros to the front, and then my 1s will come next. So there's a 1 here and a 1 here. Once again, notice that I'm trying to line these up with the one above it. Bring this, gotta separate these. Whoa, that flew across the screen. It's a new feature, I've never seen that before. There's that, let's flip that over where it goes. Right there. Okay, so those are in order. So now I have finished my stem and leaf plot. The numbers need to be in order, and I've got them in order, once again, by bins. There are certain bins that I've created, in this case, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. Now, this is very similar to a histogram. Let me show you something real quick that's kind of neat. When we created our histogram, we went from 30 to 34 for one of our bins, and then we went 30 to 39 for another set of bins, and then we went 40 to 44. So I'm going to move some things around here. 40 all the way up to 44. Hang in there with me. I think the payoff here is worth it. So here's another set of 40s. Bring this over here. Those I didn't line up quite as good as the other one. In fact, let me separate these, move them so they line up a little bit better. There we go. The 50s, I went from 50 all the way up to 54. So the 6, I'm going to bring the 6, the 7, and the 8 down here to create my next class, which was similar to what I did with the histogram. So there's that. So let's separate these just a little bit more because I didn't have any in my class from 60 to 64, but I did have one in the 65 to 69. And through a little bit of manipulation here, let's group all of this together. Let's bring these side by side. I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to turn this stem and leaf plot on its side like this. And I'm going to take this histogram that I had before and turn it. It's already turned on its side. And if I bring these over, you, it's almost perfect. Maybe if I make my this just a little bit bigger, you can see the similarities between the two. The stem and leaf plot is basically another way to visualize the histogram depending on the way that you organize it. If I flip that stem and leaf plot on its side, it looks a whole lot, in fact, it looks almost identical to the histogram that we made before. Okay? So I didn't, I didn't have to separate these into the bottom half of the 30s and the top half of the 30s and same thing with the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. But if I do that, I'm creating the same classes as I did with my histogram, and they look the same. So there you go, stem and leaf plots.